Every time you load a web page, make an API call, or interact with a web application, HTTP headers are quietly working behind the scenes. These headers are like little messengers that carry essential metadata about the request or response being exchanged between a client and a server. In short, headers provide critical instructions and details about the HTTP communication. Without them, web communication would lack structure, security, and efficiency. In this video, we are diving deep into HTTP headers, covering not just the essential ones, but also exploring advanced concepts, especially from a security perspective. Whether you are new to HTTP headers or looking to strengthen your understanding of how they safeguard modern web applications, this guide has you covered. So buckle up and let's get started. An HTTP header, for example, content type colon application slash JSON, consists of three parts. A case sensitive name like content type, a colon separator, and the value of the header like application slash JSON. And a single HTTP request can contain multiple headers, each serving a specific purpose. To truly understand HTTP headers, let's first see how to inspect them. Modern web browsers come equipped with powerful developer tools. And here is how you can inspect headers. You open your browser, say Chrome, right click on a web page, select inspect, navigate to the network tab, refresh the page to load all network requests, and click on any request to see its headers under the headers section. You'll see categories like general request headers and response headers. Each provides specific information such as content type, cache settings, and authentication tokens. For developers who prefer the terminal, curl is a handy tool. To fetch headers for any URL, use the hyphen i option. This command here returns only the headers making it an efficient way to inspect them without fetching the entire web page. Let's dive into some of the most commonly used HTTP headers and understand their purpose and applications. These headers play a crucial role in both requests and responses, ensuring smooth communication between clients and servers. We'll explore how they work, when to use them, and why they are essential. The content type header tells the server or client the media type of the data being sent in the body of the request or response. It defines the format of the payload so the recipient knows how to process it. In an HTTP request, the client, say a browser or maybe an API consumer, sets this header to specify the format of the request body it is sending. In an HTTP response, the server sets it to indicate the format of the response body being returned. So here for JSON, we have content type as application slash JSON. And for HTML, the content type will be text slash HTML with the caracet UTF-8. And here is a simple Springboard code example. The producer's attribute in add get mapping ensures the response has content type application JSON so that the client can process the response as JSON. It ensures the server knows how to interpret the incoming request and the client understands the response. The accept header is sent by the client to inform the server about the media types such as XML or JSON it can handle or prefers to receive in the response. For example, the client sends the accept header to application JSON and the server responds accordingly. It's essentially a way for the client to say, this is the format I'd like the response to be in. In our code here, producers equal to media type dot application JSON value ensures the response will always be in JSON format. This prevents the server from accidentally returning a different format, for example, XML, and aligns with the client's request. Note that even though the accept header informs the server of the client's expectations, the server must still explicitly declare the actual format of the response through the content type header. Now, if the client's accept header requests XML, but the server is restricted to JSON, the server responds with 406 not acceptable. And if the server supports both JSON and XML, it chooses the format based on the client's accept header. Configuring your API to support multiple formats makes it flexible for diverse client needs. However, if JSON is your standard, clearly document the supported formats for your API consumers. Let's put this into context with real world example. Here, the client is telling the server, I am sending you a data in JSON format. And the client is saying, I expect the response to also be in JSON format. And while responding, the server uses accept header to determine the response format, JSON in this case. It sets the content type header in the response to indicate the format of the return data. The cache control header controls browser caching behavior, improving performance by reducing unnecessary server request. For example, it allows caching for one hour. And here is how caching is implemented in a Spring Boot application. Cache control of MaxH3600 
sets the caching duration to 3600 seconds or one hour. So the response body will be cached, reducing repeated server requests during this period. Next, we got the set cookie header. Cookies are small pieces of data that a server sends to a client's browser. The browser stores these cookies and sends them back to the server with each subsequent request. This enables the server to remember the client state, such as authentication details, user preferences, or session information. Here is an example of how to set cookies in a Spring Boot application. Here, HTTP only ensures the cookie is inaccessible via JavaScript. When a cookie is marked HTTP only, client-side scripts running in the browser cannot access it. This is especially important to protect sensitive data such as session tokens from being exposed to cross-site scripting or XSS attacks. For example, protecting authentication cookies that hold sensitive session information. Secure ensures the cookie is transmitted only over HTTPS. When a cookie is marked secure, the browser will include it only in requests sent over an encrypted HTTPS connection. This prevents attackers from intercepting the cookie during transmission via man-in-the-middle or MITM attacks. It's mainly applicable to any cookie storing sensitive data, such as user credentials or session tokens. And here are a few more headers that will strengthen the security of your applications. Authorization determines whether a client has permission to access a particular resource. It's a critical component of securing APIs. Authorization header is used for authentication and authorization, and it carries credentials like tokens or API keys. And there are different types of authorization and authentication, which I have already discussed previously. Here, the client sends an authorization header to provide credentials for accessing a protected resource. And here is an example of how the header might look like when using a bearer token. In the server-side code, the server extracts the authorization header. In this case, the bearer keyword is followed by a token, which the server uses to authenticate the client and validate their permissions. The token is validated by a custom auth service before granting access. Cross-origin resource sharing, or course in short, controls which domains can access your API. Without proper course setting, your API could be vulnerable to unauthorized cross-origin request. Browsers normally block web pages from making requests to a different domain for security reasons. This is called the same origin policy. But modern web apps often need to get data from APIs on other domains, which is where cores come in. It allows server to decide which domains are allowed to access their resources. And Spring Boot makes it easy to enable cores. So here in this example, add mapping applies cores to all endpoints. And allowed origins limits access to specific domains mitigating any security risk. And finally, X-Frame Options header prevents your site from being embedded in an iframe on external websites, protecting against click-jacking attacks. Click-jacking tricks a user into clicking a button or link on a malicious page disguised as a trusted website. For example, a user might think they are clicking submit on a form, but unknowingly, they perform an action on another site. Spring Security automatically includes this header if enabled in the configuration. HTTP headers are vital for building efficient, secure, and user-friendly web applications. From controlling cache behavior to enabling cores, each header serves a specific purpose. Now that you have a deeper understanding of headers, you are well-equipped to design more robust REST APIs.